How is it going everyone today? I'm here with my PWG Head Like a Cold Blu-ray review. Without wasting any time, let's go ahead and jump right into the video. Of course, as always, with the cover artwork right here, you have the Blu-ray disc logo, as always, on the upper part of the cover. Of course, with the Head Like a Cold logo right there, with a nice picture of Adam Cole front and center with the signature pose. Love that picture of him, by the way. And of course, as always, you have the Young Bucks as well as the Lucha Bros on the cover as well. Pro Sun Gorilla's Head Like a Cold, May 19th, 2017, Rosita, California. May 19th. Um, but, yeah, this is a great cover. You know, it's pretty simple, but it's a job done. Of course, it captures, you know, the title of the show as well as what the, the title of the show is about or, you know, the reason behind the title of the show. So, I like the cover. I think it's a great cover. It's simple but effective. It gets the job done like most PWG covers. You open it up right here with the artwork on the inside. You got a picture of Trent right there hitting a Duke Buster and uh, Zack Sabre Jr. And you got a picture of Kyle O'Reilly and Jeff Cobb on the disc right there. So that is the inside artwork right there. And of course, as always, here is a spine. Looks like on your shelf right there. Had like a coal. And of course, picture of Trent right there. So that is a spine. And of course, the back is always, you know, capturing some pictures of the event. Pretty much giving you a sneak peek of what to expect when watching this show. And of course, at the match listing right there as well as the tiny but um, very... Not very effective, but, you know, just a description of the show, I guess. Uh, on May 19th, uh, 2017, Pro and Grilla returned with Head Like a Cole and Rock and Lee in uh, Industrial Rosita, California. Head Like a Cole on Blu-ray features seven incredible matches, including, and of course, as always, there is a match card right there. So if you want to go ahead and pause it, you guys can and read it. But, um... There it is right there. Um, my real thoughts on the show was that definitely it was a great show from PWG right here. Uh, PWG this series was consistently great. Um, however, I will say there hasn't really been anything must-see about PWG this year. Um, and that's, you know, a perfect example of the show right here. It's an easy, fun uh, show to sit through. But honestly, there's nothing on the show that I really would go out, you know, come out and say, you know, go out of your way to see. So even though it's a great show, um, not if you missed out on it, you're not missing out too much. But um, I would recommend it. Like I said, it's a great show. Uh, probably my second favorite PWG show this year uh, behind PWG Nice Boys. But um, it's a very fun uh, show. It's only two hours and 16 minutes, so it's not very long. Uh, you get four awesome matches, in my opinion. You have four uh, great matches that I really enjoyed. And, um, yeah, it's an overall fun, you know, great wrestling show to shit through. So um, I'd personally recommend watching it and personally recommend getting it. So um, there's that. Uh, the show opened up with Keith Lee versus Trevor Lee. Um, honestly, I wouldn't have picked it to been the opening, uh, opening match because I just, I don't know. This match felt like it definitely should have been, like, number three or, you know, maybe the first match after intermission. I don't know, just... just didn't feel like it should have been uh, the opener. But you got some comedy stuff in the beginning. You know, Trevor Lee trying to uh, convince Tre uh, Keith Lee to um, join TNA with him and become the, the Lee brothers and uh, become the TNA Tag Team Champion. So he had some comedy stuff in the beginning. Uh, Trevor Lee would take advantage of that and knock down Keith Lee. You know, hit some uh, pe uh, penalty kicks on the outside in the apron. Um, really kind of dominating Keith Lee. Keith Lee had his comeback, um, hitting a nice, a nice pounce on Trevor Lee. Um, Trevor Lee was able to counter the spear, uh, pop of spirit bomb into the double stomp, which was a nice, uh, was a nice spot right there. Uh, he was also able to do the um, uh, the backflip into a German suplex on the Keith Lee, which was an incredible spot as well. But um, yeah, you know, started off real slow, you know, not too much going on, but the match picked up towards the end and uh, it became a pretty good opening match with uh, Keith Lee getting the win after um, the pop-up spirit bomb. So good opening match, just I feel like it would have been better off position elsewhere on the card. Uh, from there, I'm going to Jeff Cobb, Matthew Riddle versus Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly. Um, this was an awesome match right here. This was everything you could imagine it to be, and uh, it was it was great. Non-stop action, great uh, chain wrestling from uh, both teams. You know, Jeff Cobb and Matt Riddle have come so much on their own as, as a tag team in PWG. Um, honestly, it's mind-blowing to me that they're not the tag team champions right now. Um, they definitely should be, and uh, their matches just keep getting better and better as they go. Definitely... Um, Probably the biggest highlight in PWG right now is Jeff Cobb and Matt Riddle. But um, this was excellent stuff with them in uh, Red Dragon. I thought this was a very fun tag team match. Had a lot of great spots, a lot of great transitions as well exchanges. The exchange that Bobby Fish and Matt Riddle had in this match was absolutely insane. Uh, that was great stuff right there. But Jeff Cobb, Matt Riddle, um, very early on were very dominant. You know, isolating Bobby Fish from Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, they did a spot where they both were just trading Bobby Fish back and forth with uh, gut rich uh, suplexes, which I thought was a great spot right there. Um, Kyle O'Reilly got the hot tag. Him, uh, Jeff Cobb had a nice exchange uh, in the match as well. But, um, you know, Matt Riddle and Bobby Fish's exchange, in my opinion, was was just tremendously better. But um, this was great. This was about, you know, 20 to, uh, 15 to 20 minutes of just 
pure non-stop action. You know, there wasn't a dull moment in this match. It was just, you know, consistently going. And uh, both teams tore the house down. Uh, my second favorite match of the night. Had a lot of fun watching it. You know, Bobby Fish actually got busted open towards the end of the match pretty bad. Uh, it's some nice near falls. You know, one of the nice near falls is Matt Riddle um, hitting the um, Bro to Sleep fall by a German suplex and Kyle Riley for a nice near fall right there. But um, the end came with Jeff Cobb um, uh, lawn darting. Uh, Bobby Fish into a bro to sleep uh, from Matt Riddle for the 1-2-3 victory. So Jeff Cobb, Matt Riddle picked the victory. Like I said, um, awesome tag team match here. Um, like I said, uh, my second favorite match tonight. Really enjoyed that one. That was that was great stuff. Uh, from there, we had Michael Elgin versus Shane Strickland, which was, you know, a very good match. But I don't know. Um, if something just didn't feel like it wasn't clicking with those two, you know, obviously there were some notable, notable botches as well. Shane Strickland just was not coming off as smooth or crisp or anything. A lot of stuff he was doing was kind of slow and just did not come off very good by any means, in my opinion. Nothing wrong with this match, but just, like I said, something felt off and something wasn't clicking. He had some nice spots. Um, you know, Shane Strickland for a drop kick and Elgin was able to capture him into a Liger bomb. Um, they had some nice exchanges. You know, they fought on the outside a little bit. Um, the best way to compare this match on Honestly, is a match Elgin had with uh, Kamatachi at Prince last year. That's probably the best comparison I can use for this match. But very good stuff. Just something wasn't clicking. And, you know, I wish some of the stuff that Strickland did came off better. Um, this w definitely was a better performance on this match than what he had with uh, Desmond Xavier at uh, Nice Boys. But um, I don't know. I'm still not too impressed with Shane Strickland. Elgin got the win after the Buckle Bomb and Elgin Bomb combination. So... That was that. Uh, from there, I'm going to Sammy Callahan versus Adam Cole, which is Adam Cole's final PWG match right here. Um, this was an awesome match. Match tonight, in my opinion. Uh, Sammy Callahan's best performance I've seen him have so far since being released from WWE. Um, I've been very vocal about my displeasure with Sammy Callahan since he's been back in the independence. And uh, honestly, this is the best I've seen him do. So um, this was very physical, very high intensity from both men. Um, there are some comedy spots, of course, because, you know, Adam Cole bringing out his comedy character um, at, you know, the beginning of the match to kind how to stare down at the you know the you know who can draw first and who can you know hit first so that was um that was a nice little way to start the match but it, it was great you know the match won the outside uh sam callan did a nice dive in the outside which they both went to like the third or fourth row which was an insane dive um very physical, uh, very fast paced as well. There wasn't really a dolmo in the match. Uh, Sam Callahan, you know, did the spot where he tried to run around the ring and do um. A drop kick on the Adam Cole, but Adam Cole just nailed him with a super kick. Uh, chairs got involved. Um, chairs got in the ring, and then you know um, Sam McCallan actually would give Cole German a suplex on the chair, and Cole's leg actually landed on it pretty nastily. And then uh, you know uh, uh, Sam McCallan would take advantage of that. He would actually utilize chairs to beat down Adam Cole's left leg. Um, he gave him a power bomb through the chair, which was a very nasty spot, as you can see right there. Um, very nasty landing for Adam Cole on the spot as well. That was just that was very very vicious. So. Um, very physical, hard hitting, like I said. Uh, definitely, it was a great way for Adam Cole, Adam Cole to go out. A lot of great near falls. The crowd was actually very behind Adam Cole, um, which is weird because this was actually like a, a flip flop. The crowd was very against Sam McCallum, and, and the crowd was very for Adam Cole. Uh, so that was a weird dynamic to see that uh, for these two guys. But yeah, they went out there, tore the house down, and had a great match, and uh, really enjoyed it. Definitely, it was a great way for Adam Cole to go out. And uh, like I said, Sam McCallum's best performance he's had in PWG in quite some time. Uh, Sam McCallum was just kicking out everything Cole's given to him. Cole hit the Panama Sunrise, kicked out, hit the um, the uh, Fireman's Carry onto the knee a handful of times, and uh, Sam McCallum still kicked out. So um, everything Cole was throwing at him, Sam McCallum was just retaliating and uh, you know not taking it or kicking out of it, and not you know laying down for the pin. Eventually, um, they're you know doing a, a series of small packages, and uh, Sam McCallum was in end up getting the victory with the small package for the one two three so adam cole loses the crowd's pretty stunned and shocked by he lost uh but it was an awesome match and of course afterwards adam cole did a signature adam cole baby and the crowd you know did it with him I went to shake sam mccallan's hand and faked him out and uh, i believe he was spitting or blowing a snot on him i forgot which one he did but um a very adam cole like exit so uh match and like i said great exit for adam cole and um like i said sam mccallan's best match in uh in years in my opinion uh, from there, I'm going to uh, Mark Haskins versus Leo Rush. Another really good match here, but honestly, I just wasn't invested in it. You know, those, you know, Leo Rush and Mark Haskins are two guys that, you know, I'm still not very emotionally invested into yet. So to see two guys that I don't really care that much about have a singles match, it's hard to invest or care about it. So 
that was my stance there. Um, they were wrestling and just nothing was bad, but I just was not caring what I was seeing. Um, you had some nice chain wrestling for both men, uh, some nice counters. You know, Leo Rush was able to hit a standing Spanish fly, which was really nice. Uh, Mark Haskins was, you know, able to lock into submissions and, you know, just had a good, have a good back, uh, back and forth match between the two of them. But like I said, just, I just didn't care enough, honestly. And uh, Leo Rush got the win with the uh, frog splash with the top rope. So, very good stuff, but it's just, you know, I'm not emotionally invested in two guys, and uh, I just, you know, I couldn't really pay attention. That's probably the biggest problem with PWG nowadays, is they're so focused on bringing all these new talents that, you know, it's hard to really invest a lot in what they're doing, because, you know, these are fresh faces that, you know, even though you may have seen them in different companies, I'm not too familiar with still. So, to see them face off, and, you know, even though I don't know much about them, it's hard to really care what they're doing. So, that was the case with those two. And I'll, I'm sure that'll be the case for Bolo, honestly. I know they're bringing a lot of great talent, but I'm not, you know, very familiar with a lot of them. So, it's going to be pretty hard to really invest in a lot of things that they're doing. So, um, yeah, Mark Haskins, Leo Rush, very good. Just, you know, didn't really care all that much for it. Uh, then we had the World Tag Team Championship title match, Ray Phoenix and Pentagon L0M. Or, is he just OM now? I know he was Pentagon Penta L0M. It just has an O on there. I don't know if he changed his name again or what, but yeah, the Lucha Brothers versus the Young Bucks. Young Bucks come out, announce that this is a Texas Tornado Spot Fest, uh, which this match was. It was all over the place, you know, tons of spots from both tag teams. Uh, Lucha Bros are very um, tantum on their tag team maneuvers. There's one part of the match where they were pretty much um, doing the same exact moves, um, pretty much mirror imaging each other. Um, Young Bucks did some great spots as always, and, you know, their signature, you know, stuff with, you know, Matt holding the ropes down for Nick to do a jump. Um, you know, they're just, you know, doing typical Young Bucks stuff here and, uh, the match is all over the place and, uh, it was very fun. You know, I can't really complain too much about it. Not sure if this match is better than their Bolo match from last year. I'd have to rewatch that one to get a better opinion in which match is better. But, um, this was a great match. You know, Lucha Bros look good. Not really much of a fan of them as tag team champions at the moment, but, you know, can't really complain too much about that. Um, nice spot in the apron where, you know, Pentagon, uh, Pentagon, uh, what was the spot? Um... Uh, Pentagon hit a package pile driver on Nick, I believe, on the on the uh, on the apron. Then Matt uh, followed up with a um, DDT on the apron, which came off didn't come off good because Penta didn't go down with Matt, so the DDT didn't come off that good. But that was a nice spot right there. Um, they did a DDT party uh, party spot where everyone was hitting a different variation of DDT, whether it's a swinging DDT, inverted DDT, um, uh, double uh, DDT through the ropes. Um, there's a DDT party, and then of course there's a super kick party. The Young Bucks are hitting super kicks, or uh, death by super kicks. Then of course Lucha Bros turn around and hit their own death by super kicks on the Young Bucks. But um, you know, finish came. Lucha Bros were going at it. Lucha Bros, you know, our Penta hit about three, maybe four uh, package pile drivers in a row to Nick Jackson, and that was the finish right there. Um, the the final uh, package pile driver was actually an assisted one from um from uh, Ray Phoenix when he did a uh, drop kick into the um. The package pile driver, but uh, yeah, Lucha Bros retain. Like I said, very good match. You know, um, a great spot as well. I forgot to mention it was on the cover where uh, Lucha Bros were set up into the uh, pile driver position, and Matt actually launched Nick up into the indie taker on them. So that was a nice spot as well. But um, yeah, very fun match. Um, like I said, I'm not sure it was better than their bowling match, but definitely was a fun one. Then we go to the main event, which was the World Championship title match, Zack Sabre Jr. versus Trent. Um, this was a great main event right here. Um, honestly, it was better than the, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Chuck Taylor match from, uh, Only Kings Understanding Each Other. Um, Zack Sabre Jr. was very dominant, you know, pretty much, you know, um, cutting Trent down, uh, with, you know, various submissions. Yeah, that's probably what this match was, which is, you know, Zack Sabre Jr. beating down Trent, locking him in different submissions, and, you know, Trent trying everything he could to fight out of it. Um, Trent got some life into him, was trying to hit the, hit the gotch pile driver, which was, you know, what won him the match at uh, Nice Boys when he pinned Zack Sabre Jr. in the tag team match. So he was trying everything he could to hit that. But Zack Sabre Jr. was doing everything to avoid it. Um, Trent actually at one point hit the, uh, hit the, the gotch pile driver onto the ring apron, which was a nice spot. Um, then he got some steam going for him. Then the match really started picking up when Trent got some steam going for him. Trent was actually able to hit the um, gotcha pile driver in the ring at one point, but he just did not have enough to cover Zack Sabre Jr. from selling the injuries. Um, and then eventually Zack Sabre Jr. would uh, wind up getting the upper hand once again and locking Trent in submission for uh, this, the victory. So Trent taps out. Zack Sabre Jr. retained the championship. Uh, like I said, great main event. You know, um, pretty much the story was Zack Sabre Jr., like I said, beating down Trent, and Trent was just throwing everything he possibly could to fight back, but, you know, everything Trent was throwing at him, it just was not enough. And, uh, obviously, Trent was not able to um, beat Zack Sabre Jr. win the championship. So, great main event. 
Uh, just, you know, Zack Sabre Jr. as a heel. Um, and the dynamic of him dominating somebody is just odd to see because I'm not used to seeing that in a Zack Sabre Jr. match. I'm used to him being the guy to fight back and, you know, even the odds up against the guy beating him down. So to see Zack Sabre Jr. do it, it's kind of a, it was kind of a weird dynamic to see. But um, it made for a great main event. The story was good. And, um, you know, I enjoyed the match overall. So, um, yeah, that'll do it for my PWG. I had, like, a cool review. Like I said, I thought it was a great show. Um, nothing must-see really about the show. But um, if you're in for some great wrestling and want to watch a fun, you know, easy show to sit through, definitely recommend picking it up. You had four great matches. Like I said, the the, the two title matches were great. Um, Adam Cole versus Sam McCallion, which matches tonight, in my opinion. And, of course, uh, Chosen Bros versus Red Dragon uh, was my second favorite. That was an awesome match as well. So, easy. Fun sit, uh, show to sit through and watch. No problems for me at all. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys did, please leave a like a below. And uh, as always, I'll see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching the video.